Hello everyone, this is Just a Dad. Today I'm going to do a review on this Dyson 360 Robot Vacuum Cleaner. Here it is on its charging station. It has a nice touch screen. We can do a quiet, boost, quick, auto. When we want to do it, just press this as a button. We've got like a menu here. This is the navigation part. We've got an onboard HEPA filter that we can take off and clean once in a while. When it's done vacuuming, you're going to press this button. Take this over to the trash can. Here's everything that's been vacuuming up. So you take this over to the trash can. You're, it's a hands-free empty system. You're going to press this button to the right and it's going to spring open. So there's everything. I, this has vacuumed my house for two days now. And then you just close it and it's ready to go. There's everything it's picked up. It's very easy to install back on the vacuum. You're simply going to press it and it's going to click into place and the display will show you it's installed correctly. Okay, so here's the front of the vacuum. It's got a full length uh, brush roller. We've got navigation down here and here that's going to help with obstacle avoidance. On this side, when it is close to the wall, it will open up and increase suction in this area to get stuff right against the edge. Here's the bottom of the robot. We got two of these drive wheels. Lift this up. We can lift this up. The roller brush does come out for easy cleaning. Press this button right here and lift it straight up and off. So there's what the brush roller looks like. We can see we've got some stiff bristles. This is for like shining the floor really good. And we can take this over to the sink and clean this, but you don't want to get this area wet. And here's that little area with the side actuator that increases suction up against the wall. Okay, so Dyson has an app that you can use to map your house and you can use it to start and stop your clean. You can set a schedule. The first thing you're going to want to do is have it map your house. Then you can go in and name the map, name the different rooms, and put no-go zones. Here's what the different rooms look like. And then here's what the different um, no-go zones are like. Now down here we can tell it to start cleaning. We can do the whole home. We can do all areas. We can do an auto, quick, quiet, or boost. And we go back to home, we can do certain rooms. Let's do just the kitchen and we want it on auto. Okay, so in order to clean the kitchen, it's gonna take 16 minutes. Let's have it start cleaning. And here's what the robot says, preparing. So it's gonna undock itself. We've got a really big mess here. We're gonna see how well it cleans this big mess up. Okay, it's gonna undock itself and start cleaning. I've got it in auto mode. So when it senses dirt, it's gonna ramp up the suction. So there it increased suction because it noticed there was some heavy dirt. So there's that little actuator that came out when it wants to pick up more debris on the side. Okay, so it's finished cleaning and it's returning to dock, it says. So it's gonna dock itself and that way it'll be charged up, ready to go for the next time. But I have to empty that out when that bin gets full. And I, it can vacuum my house for about, oh, I had to vacuum my house for about a week, about three times a week. So here's a history report of it cleaning the kitchen and that's where I put all the dirt and debris where it's a light colored. Okay, we're gonna clean this room here. It's got kind of fuzzy carpet, kind of taller. 
but we got a bunch of dirt and material in it. We're gonna see how it does. I have it in auto. So it ramps up to about 80 decibels when it goes into high mode. Did an okay job with the carpet. Miss Fiona has come to see how it's doing also. Alright, so how does it do with certain obstacle avoidance? So it, it is managing to find its way out of that. We're going to see how it does with a cord also. So it has a hard time avoiding a cord on the ground. Yeah, it will run the cord over. Yeah, it does kind of struggle with cords low to the ground. But it did find its way out eventually. So the one thing I'm noticing with this is its pattern is kind of sporadic. It doesn't do the even lines. And I, th I think it goes around the perimeter of the room towards the end of the vacuuming. Yeah, I think it's gonna say it's done. And there's no way of adding two passes. I couldn't select. And it does stick that side brush out at random times. I thought it would just like sense when it's up against the wall and stick it out. You know, it's if it could go over this carpet twice, I think it would do a pretty decent job. But there's no way of telling it to, to clean it twice. Not that I know of yet. It's not easy. Yeah, so this vacuum is $1,200. It's gotta come down in price. It's just too basic of a vacuum for that amount of money. It doesn't have auto empty. It does seem like it's very well built, but the cleaning pattern is just not what I would call ideal. It does seem to have some areas where it just never cleans. Okay, let's see if it can avoid that shoe. It's kind of taller. So the obstacle avoidance is, it's okay. It should do better with a shoe like that. It should be able to go around it, but, so if you've got like a dog if your dog makes a mess on the floor, it's probably gonna run it over. Yeah, the pattern, I had to just clean this small area. And the pattern that it's creating, it's just too random. I could see if it thought, well, I've, I sent some dirt here, so maybe I should go back and clean that some more. Maybe it's doing that. It doesn't really say a whole lot. So it's done. Let's see if you can avoid my shoes. As it's traveling back, it can, it can avoid them. It does travel rather well. So when it cleaned this kitchen, you know, it did a pretty good job, but you can see it did leave some, it didn't get everything off. Again, if I could have had it do two passes, it might've been, it, it got quite a bit of it. This was a pretty big uh, mess that it, I created, but it only did it in one pass. And it seems to be taking the long way home instead of the short way. Now, see here, the Eufy, the X10, that's a $900 robot that mops, self-empties, <laughs> and has pretty good obstacle avoidance. This is $1,200, and I've got to empty. It's got a pretty big bin. I don't have to empty it every time. I, got to, I can empty it out probably once a week. But as you can see, you know, you're getting so much more with some of these others. Yeah, that's a problem there. It should have been able to find that a little easier and it actually moved the base. Now it's gonna dock itself. And there you go. So what I mean, 
functionality wise it does work to a point that you know it is it's a very nicely well made um, i do think it has really good suction i just wish it had more options of going over your carpet so again here's the app uh it's it works it's very functional i have not had any problems with the app whatsoever other than it just doesn't have all the functionality that i like so here's this cleaning that it just did so there's where all that dirt and debris was but i you know it didn't tell me that it hit any obstacles um, and then it kind of avoided some area, you know, maybe that's where the shoe was or something, but you can see how it's, it thinks it's doing a good job, but I think it's pretty, it's just too random for me. Let's go to the kitchen again. Why didn't it go all the way to the end? It, it mapped the room the first time and it went to the end, but then the map isn't matching up with what is. I wish the map, um, it, it kind of improved the map as it went, as it was cleaning. Some do that, but. Maybe, I mean, I do I have to remap it a third time? And again, the set, the robot settings, they're just very, very limited. I mean, it, I, don't, I don't see a whole lot. You know, where can I? Low dust prediction. Can I tell it to do it more than once? All areas. It does seem to have a pretty, um, the battery length is pretty good actually in auto. That's why they're using that auto mode because it can really save some battery in auto mode. There's boot. You don't have very much time at all when you're in boost. Quiet, auto, quick. Okay, so with my scoring, I had to, uh, NA or non-applicable all the mopping now this thing does not claim to be a mop it doesn't claim to have auto empty so I really can't grade it on that because I just have to give it an NA and a five so on the things that it does you know do it did get an 85 B so with that being said its major downfall was the price twelve hundred dollars that's you know I gave it a one I could have gave it a zero that's way too expensive for what you get is it a quality built? I, I do think it is quality built. I mean, I don't know the longevity of it. Um, it does seem very well built. Um, I do like this nice touch screen. You can do everything from there if you need to. But cost and obstacle avoidance and the cleaning pattern are the three things that I think need improved. And I didn't see things in the app like maintenance reminders tells you when to clean the brush. I mean, it's got like a it's got like a vacuum cleaner brush, like a a standard vacuum cleaner. That's a big brush compared to these these Ufies and these uh, di or these other ones. You know, they're kind of like smaller ones made just for robots. So this thing does stand out that way. And the profile, it does hug the ground everywhere, but it seems to work okay. I mean, it doesn't have a problem traversing anything with carpet or hardwood floors. They made the filter super easy to clean and access. This is super easy to use, auto empty feature. You know, I do think some people are going to get this and they're going to be extremely happy with it. But if you've got a lot of things on the floor all the time, um, this thing might struggle with it. If you have a pet that makes an accident, it's probably going to run it over. Like if there's dog poop on the floor, it's probably going to run it over and that's going to be a really hard job to clean that up. But I do think this is going to do that full size brush. I think it's going to do really good with long hair. Now, I did buy this with my own money. Now, am I going to keep it for $1,200? I don't know yet. I, I may keep it just to kind of do some more comparisons with it and see if they improve it some. I imagine they're probably going to update the app and different things. But would I, right now, would I spend $1,200 on this vacuum cleaner? No, I would not. I think there's other ones that are just as good. If I knew the longevity of it was going to be like five years with hardly any little maintenance and you know just doing the basic stuff, I might keep it for that reason only if I knew that it was going to be long-lasting. So I will put a link to this in the show description notes because this is going to be a nice vacuum for some people. It looks nice. It works. You know, if you don't have a lot of things for it to get in to run over and that sort of thing, if you just, you know, you don't always need a mopping vacuum. You don't always need one with self empty. Those things can be a little, look, they're big. They can be kind of annoying with the dust collection and sending even more dust into the air when they remove it. So I get why they do this. Now, emptying that was kind of, you saw it was pretty dusty emptying that. So it's kind of making a mess when you empty it, but this will definitely be a nice vacuum for some people. I mean, I don't know why we need these stickers like this. This, you know, I'm, uh, <laughs> those need to go. It needs to be able to find the dock without those stickers because 
this thing's actually a really good looking vacuum cleaner. So if you want to see the setup video, I show you how to do the filters. I got all the, I got the setup video, the unboxing video. This is a review. I'll be doing comparisons with others, but this is going to be a tough comparison with another one because no one's in the price range of this that does what this does. I mean, the $1,200 vacuums are like from Roborock. I mean, here's a row of vacuums. The Narwhal's 12 or about $1,400. It's an excellent vacuum. The Roborock S8, I don't necessarily recommend that. The Q-Revo, but they got a brand new Q-Revo coming out, so I'm pretty excited about that. The Dream L10S, it's okay. It's got a good price point, 800 bucks. They, uh, they got a Dream X30, which I really do like, and the L20. I got videos on all of these with comparisons, how to do the maintenance. So I even get into some of these uh, cheaper ones. So this is the Roborock Q5. I got a video on it. It's a very good one. That's like $400. Excellent auto empty, excellent vacuum. The Eureka is good, bagless. Uh, the Roombas, they're starting to get a little old in my opinion. They haven't done too many updates on them yet, but they do work really good. That's the J5. Don't get confused with the i5. The i5 is no good. J5 is where it's at. I also review the, the floor cleaners, the Tinicos. I got the Shark. Really do like the Dream floor cleaner, Kenmore. Here we got another. That's the J7 combo. That's the Q7 from Roborock. It's really nice. It does mopping, but the ones with these mopping attachments like that, they're they're not the best. And we got these old reliable here. We got the Shark IQ and AI. You know that one's about the both of these are about three hundred dollars. They do excellent jobs. Other than avoiding really small things to the ground. If it's a high obstacle, they'll avoid it. But if it's really low to the ground. A lot of these struggle with that, except for the Roombas. They do a good job. They got a camera on the front. The Roombas have this camera on the front that does a good job of avoiding stuff in front of it. Whereas like the Sharks, this is the Shark Detect Pro. It does okay. It's got this LiDAR navigation, but it doesn't necessarily, it has a sensor on the front, but the sensor doesn't necessarily avoid objects low to the ground, but the Roomba does. Except for the eye. Stay away from the eye robot, the i5. So I have... I do have quite a few vacuum cleaners that I do reviews on and comparisons. Lots of Shark, Bissell. I've even gotten into the Dyson. I do have the Dyson Ball Animal 3. It's a heavy vacuum. It does a, it does a great job. It's just extremely heavy. So if you could look for me over on Instagram, if you, go, if you could go get a, a follow over there on Instagram, my Facebook group page, Just to Dad Videos. I'm also on TikTok. I do free giveaways on my Instagram page and my um, Facebook group page. So if, if you want to see more videos on robot vacuums, I buy them with my own money. That way I can say, would I spend, would I spend $800 on the Eufy X10? Yes. Would I spend $1,200 on the Dyson? No. I can tell you that. I have no obligation to any manufacturer. I ordered these myself. They didn't send them to me. So I don't feel obligated to say anything other than the, would I spend that money on it? So again, I really do appreciate everybody's support. That's why I do what I do is to inform you of how these work and you know, buying them with my own money, I feel like is the way to go because I just feel way too obligated when they send them to me for free um, to be nice. And I don't wanna, I want to, inf I would rather inform you the most honest way I can. The most honest way I can is, is when I spend my money on it because that, that $1,200, that really hurt. You know, when I spent that, that was that was my budget almost for the month. And so that really, really hurt. But I, I felt like I needed to do that in order to explain what I thought of it in the most honest way I could. So, again, I really do appreciate everybody's support. Thank you so much. And if you could, please like and subscribe. And thanks for watching.